transmitting from the front lines of the war gaming world. You are watching Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire. The show where you can watch, learn, and even play our games live online. We will be showing some of our favorite tactics and answer your game questions. This is Friendly Fire. Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin the OG, the original Grognard, and I am back here with my good friend Johnny, and we are continuing our playthrough of what are we playing? <laughs> Heroes of North Africa, uh Manchai Amour, uh Italian armor attacking French defenders. Uh we started this a uh, friendly fire episode to beginning of the month. And then we kind of got side yeah. we got we got sidetracked with armchair dragoons, uh, the that con, and so now we are back and we should be able to finish off this. Johnny should finish kicking me in the teeth on this one. He uh, <laughs> he's he's doing a, ra a rather good job of it he's as it a is. Good job. Uh, let me turn down the volume on that. And uh, since we're up and running now, that means I have to spread the link to all the pertinent sites. So I'll go ahead and let Johnny take over chatting and uh, I will try to be quiet while I uh, do the social media thing. Right on. Hey guys, um, how's everybody? Hope everybody's well and COVID free and all that. And uh, just wanted to talk about the uh, new admin counters. Not sure if anybody went ahead and got those yet, but I just received mine in the mail the other day. And um, they're actually pretty good looking. They, I highly recommend them. Uh, a little different because you're used to the certain ones, but they're not so different that, uh, you know, you, you're not familiar with them. But um, they actually have some new counters in, hull down, uh, vehicle emplacement. What do you think of the, uh, What do you think of the upper floor markers that they're they're bigger size now? Yes, those are really cool as well. Yep, I'm looking at those right now. I like them. And I like that they're a little larger, exactly. Uh, yeah, everything's really cool. Uh, colorful. Um, nice to have an upgrade, you know, for sure. Might actually have to get a couple more for my other titles. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. the, uh, and I, I've told this story before, and I, I love telling it. Is the uh, uh, the upper floor markers? I, I recommended we make those a little bit larger because so many times I'd be playing a game and would try to move in, in and assault. Uh, you know, I, I I would I would shake uh, some enemy units, and then I would move in and try to assault and find out that they're actually on the second floor and I don't have enough movement points to get to them to engage in melee. So I'm stuck on the bottom floor and the next turn they usually rally and, you know, drop a bunch of grenades on my head. So I, <laughs> because, because the old upper floor markers were the same size as the infantry counters. And if, if you've got a big stack of them and you don't want to go through the enemy stack, you, you miss that they might be on the upper floor. So that's what, that's why I, that's why I kind of recommended that we, uh, that we make the upper floor market just a little bit bigger. So. Yes, makes a lot of sense. And I'm popping these off the yeah. screw now, and they just fall right out. I can hear you <laughs> doing that in the back. You can hear it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, they just come right out. Got to just love the quality of the uh, the kind of that uh, LNL pub publishing does. Yeah, I, uh, I I really you know not not to sound biased or or anything like that, but yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, okay, I am a little bit biased, but I really do love um, the 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 pre rounded thick counters that just kind of fall off the sprues, and you you don't have. You know, it just, yeah, it's, 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 it's good stuff. Absolutely. Especially for me coming from a mi mostly miniature background, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like vi vis visuals, super in important, I guess, you know, because used to seeing three dimensional models on the table, not that I still don't, but so it's nice to have, you know, visually 
looking great looking game oh yeah oh yeah what uh what miniature games did you primarily uh uh play so uh, i play a lot of them but <laughs> right now i'm scaled <laughs> i'm scaled back i've been playing this game called conquest the last argument of kings mm -hmm. and it is a great fantasy rank and flank but it's fast so it's they call it Rank and flank and skirmish speed. Rank and flank. That so, is cool. I've never heard that term before. Yes. So uh, it all. they also just released the rules for it to be just a skirmish game. So, you know, you have maybe 15 to 20 models on the table. And um, it's a lot of fun. And me and a couple of my buddies have been playing it. I've been painting it and uh, all that. So... And I play others too. I was playing bolt action for a while, historicals, you know. Yep, yep, yep. Um, bolt action is pretty popular, so. Yeah, I've been playing that. All right. Well, I think I've got I've got uh, everything all uh, out to the the pertinent uh, media sites. Do want to welcome some people who are in the chat with us on uh, Twitch right now? Rich Kerr is here. He says hello all. Uh, Michael is here. He says hello everyone. JP twenty two ten two thousand. Uh, Steve, uh, yep. Steve. Oh, I'm gonna guess that Steve Overton is here, and Chester. Uh, hey there. Will Road to Stalingrad have the new count, the new admin counters? For the most part, yes. Uh, the counter sheet for Road to Stalingrad was set in place before we developed the 5.1 counters. So the counter art. If it's the infantry size counters are going to be the new counter art. The target acquisition is has got I, I had my artist do some different target acquisition, but still following kind of the uh, the the same premise of the acquiring and the target being marked on both both on the pertinent counters. Um it'll have the new smoke, it'll have the new fire markers in it. I just the the, the we're not gonna have the large vehicle size counters in there. I just could not find a way to fit the new admin counters that use the large vehicle size onto my counter sheet because I was I was scrambling for space uh, to begin with uh, to, to get the the amount of vehicles I wanted in there. So basically, I would have had to have put an entire new counter sheet in there, and there's just there's just no way I can do that. So, but uh, so here's Road to Stalingrad will mostly have the new counters. Uh, I'm working with our designer who's doing, uh, the, you know, basically North Africa too. Uh, and we're, again, those counters were mostly set in stone. And again, we're not going to be able to get the vehicle size counters and Grenada, that counter sheet was set in stone years ago. So the next three major box sets are going to have the new art, but not the larger size counters. Um, the titles after that, the titles that we have not had the counter sheet set in stone yet, um, just because of, you know, we just haven't, haven't gotten around to getting the counter sheets, will have the new counters, will have the new, new sides. And Rich Kerr is saying this is great to watch during a blizzard. Uh, yes, I, I completely agree with you. I think, uh, I think sitting down watching Johnny and I play is a great way to spend an afternoon with the blizzard <laughs> going on. Where, where is Rich, Rich by the way? Because we haven't... Yet? because you uh you're, you're in the northeast you get snow a lot too don't you i think we talked about this before uh, yes it's coming actually uh tomorrow and tuesday was supposed to get hammered <laughs> oh wow uh how many do you know how many, if, how many inches and rich I, is rich is saying he's in philadelphia ah okay so it's probably coming our way um we're supposed to get i know I didn't see Monday's tally, but I think Tuesday was six to twelve. Ooh. Yeah, not fun. Oh, we get snow. We already got. Oh, go ahead. No, we already got like almost four feet. I think at the beginning of the month, <laughs> nice. in one time. Yeah, it was brutal. Nice. Yeah, see where I'm at in Seattle, the mountains get you know feet and feet of snow, and down in the lowlands where I'm at, I mean we're lucky if we get you know, maybe four inches all year. If that, wow. Mo most years we don't, <laughs> we don't even get a dusting. We had, uh, we had about four or five inches. And, and, you know, of course we called it snowmageddon and snow, snowpocalypse about three years ago. 
Um, and the funny thing is, Seattle, Seattle drivers cannot drive in the snow because we just just we just don't <laughs> get snow. So yeah, nobody right. knows how to drive in snow. So yeah, Rich is saying he's getting twelve to eighteen inches. Anyways, we have uh, bloviated oh. and uh, gone on long enough. We need to get back into the game because someone is kicking my butt, and I need to try to do something to turn my fortunes around. <laughs> um. So we left off at, uh, well, we were starting the new turn. Uh, so we've got initiative to roll for. So let's go ahead and I'll roll initiative. I got a four. And you got a three. So I retain initiative going into turn five. And I don't have anybody that is shaken that I can rally. I do have this shaken leader over here, but he doesn't have a leader. And if I remember correctly, you do have a shaken, uh, shaken dude in that stack. Yep, you do. So you need to yeah, I do for him. And you will get uh, your leadership morale or the leadership modifier because the leader is uh, in good order. Oh, I saw that too. You almost had it. <laughs> so, no bueno. But you've still got at least one squad in there. All right. So, uh, then, now that's basically it for for rallies and weapons. I don't think you want to... I, I don't think there's anybody you have that can switch out weapons or pick up weapons. I don't think so. I think all I of your either. weapons... Yeah, all of your weapons are, are attached to somebody. I haven't killed any of your infantry, so it's not like... You can really, yeah. In fact, yeah, I, yeah, I'm the only one that's taken casualties so far. What is up with that? All right, so we're gonna start this off. Where do we want to start off? I think let's start off right here, and let's go ahead and take this M13, who is currently immobilized, uh, and let's go ahead and shoot because he is acquiring at target B. Where's target? Target B is right there. So we're going to be firing at that 70 millimeter, 75 millimeter ATG. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's flip it over because I do not remember the tables. Uh, so we're looking at range of five or less. So my base to hit is eight. Okay, so it's eight and then it's point blank. So I get plus two to my dice roll. So technically I need a 10 and... You, I've got an acquiring marker on you, so that means I need an 11. And you're in a Sanger. Oh, do you remember what the Sanger, Sanger's modifier is off the top of your head, Johnny? No. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, well, we got Let's the train effects chart right over here. Let's take a look yes. at the train effects chart. Sanger plus two. So 11, 10. Okay, so I need a nine to hit. Let's go ahead and, and watch me miss. Ah, nine, just barely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my uh, HE value is a two, and so I'm at a D6 plus two, and you're just at a normal D6 for the damage check. I get a six. One dice. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Okay. No worries. It happens. Six to one. Uh, so I beat, or actually, yeah, six to one. So I beat you by five. So it's a morale check plus five on your dice roll. So one dice plus five. That's a six. What's your morale? Your morale's a six. Hey, look at that. Didn't even shake you. <laughs> uh, all right. But since I did... Okay, so that B acquiring marker, since I shot at you a second time, gets flipped over. Now it's a negative two for me next time, if I'm still around next time. Um, You, you know what I'm going to do also, and I should have been doing this at the start, 
if we take a look at the M1340, it does have a machine gun value. It's got two machine gun values there. Taking a look at the counter. And Johnny, if you want to yeah. cursor over one of the vehicles and hit the alt button, that brings up the, the actual counter itself so you can follow along with what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. And for and for those of you uh, playing the home version, it's got a machine gun value of one asterisk and then a machine gun value of four. Okay, so the asterisk, is a 360 degree firing machine gun but you have to be unbuttoned to use it so i can't use the one machine gun firepower because i'm not unbuttoned because that's just dangerous for me however the four machine gun value is just out through the front arc um so i am going to go ahead and also spray you with machine gun fire uh a four machine gun va value i get a plus two because we're adjacent and you get a plus two because you're in the Sanger. So I am one dice plus six. You're one dice plus two. And I get a seven. And you get a five. So you that's a morale check uh, plus two. So a D6 plus two. Two, three, four, which is less than six, and you're good. So yeah, all that fire. You know, I don't want to disparage the Italian forces, but their, their marksmanship has not been that good. All right, so that's my action. Over to you. Hmm. I will... I will fire my mortar, I think. Can I have enough? Yeah, I'll fire my mortar back here. Okay. To the one there that says acquiring one next to the fire. I can't see the number. Of that one? Yes. All righty. Um, did we determine if the mortar actually did anything to a vehicle? Oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe they, maybe it does yeah, I not. Don't, I don't think it does because I'm not unbuttoned. So you, I think right. you were dropping the mortar shells on like my, my crew, my shaken crew over here or something. Yeah, let's drop it there. All right. Uh, so yeah, you've got uh, three firepower. Uh, let's see. There's really no obscuring terrain. Uh, you don't need to roll to hit because it's a direct fire. It's an it's an indirect, it's a direct indirect shot. Kind of a, kind of a weird thing with mortars. Um, well, not really weird. It's just you know it is what it is. Uh, so it's in line of sight. So yeah, you've got three. I've got the only cover I've got is the vehicle. And let's go ahead and check the terrain chart to see what a vehicle does uh plus two so you've got a d6 plus three i've got a d6 plus two for defense i get a three I get a seven. and you get a seven you beat me by four so it's a d6 plus four on my morale roll it five plus four is nine so you don't double me however i am already shaken so let's go ahead and take a look at let's see if i can find the proper chart for the damage uh no that's fate of crew and passengers uh, nope that's not it uh doo -doo 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 -doo. so many player aid charts there we go uh so greater than morale but less than twice and i'm already shaken so a shaken unit can't redo yeah da 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 where is it? Shaking you. Can we, all vehicles can self rally. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, where is it? Da, 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 da. Oh, it's a shaking MMC. <laughs> It's right there in the second column. Shake an MMC. Dice roll greater than or less or less than greater than morale less than two times. So he takes casualties. Um, yeah, so that's going to kill him off because crews are considered a uh, uh, a half squad anyways. 
So they cannot reduce any further than that. So that mortars, you dropped them right on top of my head and killed off my poor crew. Ouch. Well, ouch to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, flips back over to my side. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and take this vehicle here and fire at the target that we've already acquired. Uh, flip over the counter again, just so we make sure. We're at a range of five or less, so the base to hit is eight. Um, I am not adjacent. I'm acquiring, so it comes to a nine. You're in a Sanger, which is plus two, so I need a seven to hit. Seven on 2d6. And I got a five. So that's a hit. Uh, and it's going to be... My high explosive value is two. So it is going to be a d6 plus two versus your d6 defensive of just a normal d6. Uh, so I got a three. And of course you've got a lots. All right, well, I'm going to pour machine gun fire in at you. So it's going to be four. I'm not adjacent. Uh, you do have the Sanger defense. So my dice roll is a D6 plus four, and your dice roll is a D6 plus what? Let's see if you remember it. What's your Three. defense for being in a Sanger? Uh, plus one. Is it plus one or is it plus two? Plus two. Uh, actually, I think it is plus one because it's right there printed on the counter. Plus one. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm I got. To, that. Oh yeah, there it is. Plus one. Yeah. 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 So Sorry. I got a. I got a d6 plus four. You got a d6 plus one. And I get a nine. Oh, you get a seven, so it's uh, failed by two. So it's a d6 plus two for morale. And you've got better than a 50-50 shot of. Oh, there you go. Finally. I finally, finally broke through. Shake something. Uh, so you don't have a shaken on the backside, so just put a shaken marker on it. Actually, I don't. Yeah, he doesn't have. Let's check just to make sure. Uh, flip. Yeah, okay, but it is a gun. It is a gun crew, and they do have the SR on there, so they can self rally. We'll go fire. Yep, there you go. Uh, so then it flips over to your turn. Yeah. So I will fire this uh, 75 mil at the one right there that's fired. Right in front of it. All right. Like, uh, which you actually have got acquired, and it's at a minus one. So go ahead and flip over that counter, and let's see. Let's uh, let's. I'll let you work through what your to hit chart is. Again, you can just hit the or cursor over and hit the alt button. So you're at seven hexes or less. Seven. Yep. Okay. So that's your base to hit. Um, you've got the acquiring marker on there. So what does that give you? Uh, it gives me plus one. No, minus one. Minus one on the dice roll. We're basically yep. increasing your hit by one. So that's an eight. And you're also at point blank range. You remember what? One, the point two. Was? Yep. Point blank range is yep. plus two. So what's your total to hit on 2d6? Ten. There you go. Ten. Roll it. That point blank that's going to end up. Oh, <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> All right. So you rolled a three, which is an odd number. So that's going to be a hull hit. What's your armor piercing value at that range? Uh, Fourteen. I'm sorry, what? Oh, no. That's, that's the range. Seven. You go down the, down on that. Yep. It's it. Seven is the range. Uh, then the second row is the to hit number. The armor piercing is the bottom row. Bottom number, so four. Yep, your armor piercing is four. You're hitting me in the hull front, 
which is a armor of two. So you've got a D6 plus four. I've got a D6 plus two. And I got a 10. And you, oh, you got a 14. So, oh no. Not a 14. You got a 10. I got a tw I got an eight. Ugh, that's it. That's that new math thing. It's, it's so hard. Regardless, you rolled better than I did. You penetrated the armor. Boom. Tank goes bye-bye. Remove the fired marker. Remove the immobilized marker. Remove the tank completely and put our wreck marker out there. This is not going well for me. Um, let's see. I had the B acquiring, so I need to remove the B because they're no longer there. Technically, you can leave the D acquiring on there because you acquire by hex. Um, or you can just, uh, well, and since you hit me again, uh, or you can just remove it if you don't think I'm going to move in there. Probably not going to move in there. But so the next time you fire, that'll change it anyways. Okay. Uh, so yeah, good shot on that one. Um, so that's your turn. We had the fire marker under there. We did. Yeah, there we go. My, my OCD <laughs> make counters nice and pretty. All right, so my turn. Abandon, dead, fired, dead. What are these guys? Uh, abandoned. I got two operating tanks left. This is not good. Uh, all right, well, then we're just going to go ahead and take this guy. And was I shooting at this guy? Oh, you know what? Let's explode the tack. The stack, yes, I was shooting at that guy. So, because I've already, I, there's my acquiring marker. So, let me go ahead and I will go ahead and fire at them. Flip it over real quick. Uh, less than five hexes. My base to hit is an eight. I've got the acquiring marker, 910. I'm not adjacent, no leader for me, uh, but you're in a Sanger, so it's a nine, so I need nine on 2d6 to hit with ordinance. Nine, whew. Nice. <laughs> All right, so I've got uh, two high explosive values, so it's gonna be d6 plus two versus your defense of just a straight d6. Ooh, eight. Versus two, so I beat you by six, so it's a morale check plus six. Uh, oh, 12, that is double. And let's see, it is a, uh, let's see, good order MMC, shaken, good order SMC, hero shaken, armored vehicle, armored leader, unarmored vehicle. Uh, do, 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 do. You're already shaken, correct? I think, think so. I think I had already shaken you. Let's explode this. Yep. Go ahead and explode the stack. Whoops. How do you do it again? You right click on the stack and it brings up the uh, pop uh, the drop down menu and explode stack is the first option. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Yes. So you right are, you were already shaken. Um and that would be yeah, you're dead. <laughs> Finally, finally, I killed something. I'm not going to worry about leaving the acquisition marker there. Yeah, I'll take that acquisition marker off from that vehicle off as well. Woo! -hoo. I've lost, what, four tanks to kill one anti-tank gun? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if this could be a this could be a comeback. Oh yeah, I'm totally starting my comeback with this one. This is to yeah, no, I'm not, I don't think so. Um, all right, back over to you. Your turn. Okay. It's, can I fire with C6 to the, let me see, 
crew over there and they abandoned or oh you killed that, still... you, you killed that oh, yeah crew. i killed them yeah your mortar fire killed that yeah um the only crew i've got that, that i've got still exposed is that crew right there i'll shoot it then with this guy here in uh uh the mg the 1914 yep uh yeah. all right so you want to figure out what your attack value is yeah Okay, so does that one flip over? Nope, that's not an ordinance. That's just a straight-up machine gun. So you just need to roll uh, infantry fire check on that one. And what's your firepower? Two. Correct. So you don't have any leaders. You don't have any other modifiers. So you've got a D6 plus two. Now, what's my defensive role? Let's see if I can. I, I, I almost I kind of feel bad that I'm figuring out all the values for you. I should be letting you try to do something. No, oh, that's that. true. Uh, yes, exactly. I agree. Shooting a guy there. Yes. Get his values. Well, the only cover I have would be uh, there's no degrading terrain between us because, you know, it's open desert. Um, so the only cover I have is the vehicle that I'm hiding behind. Do you remember what the value for the vehicle is? And if you have a question, you can always check the terrain effects card over on the left-hand side. Oh, yeah, right here. And Sorry, there. I'm... Oh, no, that's okay. Okay, so... Other vehicles plus one, is that it? No. All the way at the bottom, vehicle or wreck. All right. And look for the target modifier. Right there. I was looking at the wrong one. <laughs> I do that. Vehicle. <laughs> Okay. Uh, bottom. It's oh, it's a wreck, right? I know. Plus two. It's a it's a vehicle, but yeah, you are correct. It is plus two. So you're at a D six plus two because of your infantry fire value, and I'm at a D six plus two because I'm uh, coward. Well, I wouldn't say cowardly hiding. I'm judiciously hiding behind the uh, behind the tank. So we're the, both a D6 plus two. So, oh, all right. So you basically beat me by five. So it's a morale check plus five. Uh, and I rolled an eight, which is greater than my morale, which causes me to be, I'm already shaken. So I take casualties, which kills off that poor crew as well. Ouchie. So just mark yourself with fired, and really all I've got left is my uh, my Simovante. I love the looks of my Simovante. The problem is, there's nothing really in my arc that I can shoot at, because my arc is is this hex row here and this hex row here, and you've got no guns. Well, I could fire at this no back here. So I'm going to have to declare an assault move. A vehicular vehic vehicular assault move because I can't switch turn my turret. I don't have a turret because <laughs> uh, it's you know it's it's a self propelled gun. The problem is if I turn to face either direction, then I'm going to get probably be getting hit with a flank shot with the other gun. Oh, that's annoying. Let me, yeah, let's go ahead and do the assault move and let's rotate her uh, this way. And so we will then shoot at this target here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's put him on there. Let's take a look at the table real quick. Flip. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's five hexes. So my base to hit is four. Four is eight. I'm looking at the armor piercing number. So it's eight. I've got the leader, which makes it a nine. However, you're in the Sanger, which makes it an 
eight, and I think it is clipping through. I think it is clipping through that rec marker. It is, so that's going to be degrading terrain. And degrading terrain is going to be. Oh, I, my brain just completely lost. Let me take a look at the chart real quick. Per, degra per degrading terrain is a minus one. So I'm an eight, nine, eight. So eight, seven. So I need a seven to hit you. This is sometimes why I like preferring to play tactical digital because it just takes care of all the numbers for you. Oh, four. right. <laughs> All right, so my little short stumpy 75 did hit you. <clears throat> it's a high explosive value of three. So it's going to be D6 plus three to your normal D6. And I got a one and you got, or no, I got a four and you got a four. So it's a tie, no effect. So I am done. Actually, I'm completely done because I don't have anything else to do. Uh, so I got to step away real quick and this will give you a chance to figure out what your next move is. Any tips from everybody that want to put in the comment section? I'm, I'm open to. Alrighty, I'm back and I actually just realized I've been I've been cheating you. There is actually another modifier, a minus one for my vehicles being buttoned up. I don't think it would have made much of a difference, but yeah, since my vehicles are buttoned up, it should have been a further minus one for me to hit. And yeah, tactician is saying, My money's on Devin. Well, you're probably gonna lose <laughs> that bet then. Just saying. <laughs> so. Let's all dump money in the pool. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll move these. Whoops. I don't want to move that same guy thing. Ah, you're going to move that infantry up to oh. occupy that forward Sanger position. Good move. Good and move. Then... Okay, I'm good. All right. Uh, I got, I've got nothing left. I mean, I, I've got, I've got two tanks left. So it's all on you. So whatever you want to do from here on out for the rest of the turn. Um, I will probably just gonna pass. I think. Let's see. Well, you've What's still that? got you've yeah. still got this seventy five millimeter over here. You can fire at me, but you're gonna have to rotate your you're gonna have to rotate your firing arc. So that's gonna give you a little bit of a penalty. But you can still do it. All right. Let me move this off. Yep. Since they're going to be firing into the <clears throat> target, take that off. Whoops. Take it out to get it to. Um, just either Q or E, to cursor over it, and either press Q or E to rotate it which direction you want it to. There you go. There you go. Right. Yep. And so now your fire arc is basically here and here. So you have the option of firing at either one of my vehicles. They, you, your, both of my vehicles are in your firing arc. I will fire. I'll fire on the first one there in front. Alrighty. So go ahead and flip your ordnance chart over, or your counter over, so we can see the ordnance chart. Uh, what's your range? Four. So it's going to be seven or less. So your to hit number is going to be what? Seven or less. And whoops, sorry. 
Going to hit number seven. Yep, you are correct, and your armor piercing value is going to be what? Four. Okay, so you need a seven or less. Um, really, there's only one degrading piece of terrain between you and me, and that's the, the, the tank right here. That acts as a piece of degrading terrain, so it's going to reduce your hit by two. So you need a five or less on 2d6 to hit my my poor little M113, or my M13. Six, almost. Oh, so close. But that <laughs> does give you an acquiring marker. So you are acquiring my poor little M113 right here. All righty. Uh, what else do you want to do? Like I said, I can't do anything, so it's it's all on you for whatever you, you got. And honestly, at this point, now at this point, I don't think you have anything. You know, there you can you can move the infantry around a little bit, but you know, at this stage of the game, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's head up. Mines. Yeah, you probably don't want to run through your own minefields. Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> Um, let's see. Yeah. You can get him one more movement point into that other Sanger. It's only one movement point to enter the Sanger. There you go. Yeah. I'm going to put a move on that guy. Yep. You got it. Okay. Oops, I forgot to put an acquiring marker. Uh, he is acquiring, and he was shooting at that guy right there, I think. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and remove that acquiring marker that you had. Uh, all right, is there any, uh, anything else you want to do? Oh. So pass, 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 pass. All right. Uh, in turn, uh, go ahead and remove all administration markers, the moved, fired, and all that other good stuff that we don't need. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the victory conditions. And the victory conditions say, I must eliminate four free French weapon teams and clear empty five sangers of free French units by the end of the scenario. It is literally impossible for me to do that at this point because at best I can kill off two more of your units and that's not going to give me the four that I need plus clearing all the sangers. Um, so right. yes, at this point of the game, you, you've won. We can play the last turn through if you want, or we can just go ahead and allow my, my, my two surviving tanks to slink away ignominiously. Yeah, if we will. We'll <laughs> let them slink away. All righty. So, yeah, I kind of had a feeling this one was going to be a little bit of a short term uh, because, yeah, it was, it was, we only had a couple turns left to go and it was, it was going poorly for me to begin with. Um, I probably should have been firing my machine guns. Uh, I think maybe that would have helped me clear out a little bit more. Uh, but for some reason I thought that driving right up and, uh, blasting at you at point blank range with my guns, uh, well, we saw, <laughs> we saw how that worked. So, right. <laughs> um, uh, your thoughts and opinions on the scenario? Um, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, it's fun. And for, if to play your side, definitely got to, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to play do differently, but probably 
I don't know. It's, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it seems tough for you, but it, I mean, it's not impossible. I don't think. Of I, yeah, like I said, I think that the, I think my biggest uh, impediment was I wasn't using my machine guns because honestly, my sh machine gun value was four, which is you know almost double what my high explosive value was and my you know my my high explosive value i have to roll the hit to begin with so yeah i probably uh, uh should have been using that four points on the machine guns the machine guns probably would have inflicted more casualties on you than oh well, let's see uh my my main guns knocked out a single 75 millimeter so yeah i think the uh i think uh, I should have been using my machine gun fire. That's pretty much all I can say. And Michael says, it seems very hard scenario to win for the Italians. Um, the way I was playing it, yes. But then again, like I said, if, if I used my machine gun fire, it probably would have been a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Um, so yeah, quick, short episode of Friendly Fire today. Uh, so what the plan is for, for the next episode, um, I think... David, well, I don't think I know. David wants me to spread out, sp for us to spread out and not always focus on lock and load tactical. So I think the next Friendly Fire episode uh, is going to, we're going to jump to Nations at War. And I think we'll, right give, I think we'll give, how, how familiar are with you with uh, Nations at War, Johnny? So I've been playing World of War 85 a lot. Um, well, not a lot, lot, but <laughs> that's what I've been playing. So I, and I have I, I do have one of the modules, but it's not the up to date version. Right, right. So what I'm thinking of doing is we might give Johnny a little bit of a break for the Nations at War, and what I'm probably going to do is do an open call for any of our fans who want to step in and play Nations at War with me for the next next couple of episodes. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that. I got a couple of people in mind who I'd like to see, but we'll see how they respond to it. But if you're interested, uh, go ahead and oh geez, what we do? Uh, go ahead and reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, you should be able to find me relatively easy in any of the lock and load uh, 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 forums and and Facebook groups that this is in. If you're interested in playing against me uh, for for Nations at War, then the plan is we come back. Go back to lock and load, and this time I think we're going to do the same thing. But Johnny will play one of our our, uh, our our viewers, and I will sit and mediate for rules. So, what do you think of that idea, John? I know I'm dropping it on you. <laughs> That's no, no, idea. it's good. I like it. <laughs> All I right. like it. So, yeah. So we'll look at doing it. Nations at War with one of our with one of our our customers, our viewers. For the next uh, Friendly Fire set of episodes. Then after that, we'll go back to uh, Lock and Load Tactical, and Johnny will take on one of our our viewers, and I will I will sit and rules officiate. So if you're interested in joining in on that, for, be it for Nations of War for Lock and Load Tactical, go ahead. Uh, if Facebook's your groove thing or something like that, um, yeah, just reach out to me. Send me a send me a private message. Uh, oh, and. Or if you're going to be watching this uh, via YouTube, I will put my contact email or how to get a hold of me the best way in the comment section below. I think, and then I, yeah, I think I think that'll take us through for the next couple months because uh, we like to do two episodes a month, and it usually takes two episodes to go through a scenario. Um, any final thoughts, Johnny? Um, how did the real battle for that turn out? That's my, I gotta look that up. If, if you don't know off the top of your head. Uh, no, the Italians. Just lost. curious. The Italians. Lost. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <that> was... <laughs> yeah. Historically, they lost. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's 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 so funny because this is the historical setup, and if you go into. Uh, uh, into the rule book, there's actually a second version of the scenario, uh, Mon Chéri Amour uh, 2, that actually gives the Italians uh, uh, a bunch of uh, mounted infantry to help them try to oh. break, the, break the lines. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they, like yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, let's see, uh, designed two versions of the scenario. This is Ralph Ferrari who designed it, a historical version one and a, a historical version two in which the Italians receive re reinforcements and victory conditions are modified. So yeah, uh, yeah, it didn't go well for the Italians historically either. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. 
So, um, all right. Well, that's all we got, I think. Questions, comments, concerns, compl Oh, I want to thank everybody who showed up today. Uh, Michael, Rich Kerr, uh, I, I want to say this guy, John Groves, but I think we know who that is. Tactician93612, Rich Kerr, Rich Kerr, Chester popped in, Steve, uh, Steve or O, like I said, I think that's Steve Overton, but I could be wrong. Um, and JP2210 2000. Thank you, gentlemen, all for hopping in and watching this. And again, if you are catching this on YouTube, thank you for watching and joining us on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I'll talk to everybody later. Hey, y'all. Uh... Well, that will end this gaming session. May God bless you and keep you safe until next time. Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire is a lock and load publishing production.